In 2010, I published a book called Cosmic Weather Report, Notes from the Edge of the Universe, Guidance for Radically Changing Times. This was a collaboration between me and Elias Lonsdale, the wizard that I had apprenticed with for seven years. In this book, Elias describes the kind of astrology that he brought through in our mystery school and had taught us back in the early 1990s, a whole different way of using astrology that scrambles up the signs and planets and houses and has different planets going with different signs and houses. Uh, it came to him from a dream of Atlantis that he had in the 1970s where he dreamed his way back into the throne room of Atlantis where he had to use an etheric disc to read the souls of two women. And when he woke up from that dream, he got a tremendous download that he first brought out to the world in the form of our mystery school in Bonnie Doon, California, in the early 1990s in the Santa Cruz Mountains under the 400 foot tall redwood trees above their cottage. William and Sarah Lonsdale brought through this new way to work with the stars. Later, uh, after Sarah died, William changed his name to Elias. And here's um, where I have Elias talking in the book Cosmic Weather Report about what that new form of astrology is. Elias saying, let's give a quick description of star genesis. It's a way of doing the stars where you directly tune to them. It's artistic and creative, visionary. You don't think about the stars. You don't endlessly get caught in analysis. You feel your way in by intuition and inner knowing. You activate direct star vision, star knowingness, star awakening. Like jazz, the chart becomes something different each time you play it. It's more shamanic journey than information session. I have to stay very alert to what's streaming through. I have to open myself far more than the standard approach of sitting back in my professorial chair and analyzing the chart in a detached manner. It's called star genesis because you give birth to the stars each time you view them. You don't stand back and watch from a safe distance. You pump the stars through your veins and give the other person a direct shot of cosmos. Great power is released from this approach because when a person gets a clear reflection of their core nature and life purpose, they can't be held back so easily. The chart itself is less important than astrologers think. It's more useful as a conduit to inner nature than a definitive statement. It's just a roadmap, a point of departure, a tunnel to something vast and powerful rather than a thing in itself. You don't have the stars just be there. You bring them into being on the spot. You participate to that extent by bringing heart and soul into it rather than just your analytical intellect. That's the system that we were taught in that mystery school. I'd already created soul level astrology a couple years before that. It was a way I developed of looking through the birth chart to get to the soul. And when I apprenticed to William Lonsdale and he taught us that new system of star genesis, I began to gain the, um, the practices that would lead me toward mastery. So when I look at a birth chart, I get to see the soul, get to see past lives, get to improvise a creative star jazz, which I tried my best to inject into my new book, The Ruby Heart of the Jag Dragon, Sun Signs for Our Times, where I look at each of the 12 signs um, deep down through the teachings of star genesis that I received in the mystery school and through my own teachings and my own life experience.